All right, guys, let's get going. Uh, my name is Alex Smith. I'm the defensive coordinator at Spring Lake High School. Um, I'm here today to talk to you guys about how we use what we call the dent technique to defend gap schemes. Uh, before I get started, I want to quickly thank Coach Rabideau and the Coaches Association for the opportunity. Um, I hope you guys are at home being safe, and I'm excited to talk some football with you. <clears throat> so the plan for today, um, we're going to touch on our teaching and install progression that we use with our players. We're going to talk about our gap run fit philosophy, specifically in terms of spread gap runs. Um, we're going to talk about our dent technique, why we like it, what it is, and how we teach it and progress in our drills for it. And then we're going to show some good and bad examples of game film um, with us using our dent technique. All right, so this right here um, has always kind of been my thought process behind what kids need to know when you're installing a new scheme um, or concept. So we got this pyramid right here. I actually stole a pyramid from a coach um, that I saw in the clinic about a month ago, but it's just a great visual, okay? So with any pyramid, as you guys know, the, the bottom floor is our foundation, right? It, it is the most important part. So with, with us, um, that's effort, toughness, and knowledge, doing your 111th, takeaways, tackling, and block destruction. Okay, so these are all of the things that are really gonna go into the culture of what we're doing on defense, okay? We're, we're gonna value these things, we're gonna talk about these things every single day. It has to be the same thing when you're installing, okay? How does this scheme or concept relate to your core values? Um, I think that's really, really big on creating buy-in with your kids, okay? Going up to the next level is alignment, okay? That's really important too, all right? If, if you don't know your alignment in whatever scheme or concept you're playing, um, you probably don't have, a, you don't have a good chance of success, right? Exact same thing with your assignment, okay? If, if, if you don't know your 111th, if you don't know your job within that scheme, um, you're probably gonna make a mistake. You're probably not gonna have a lot of success. So your alignment and assignment, very, very important. Same thing with your eyes, okay? Which is what we call our key, all right? You have your primary key, you have your secondary key. If your eyes are not where they should be, um, you're probably not gonna make the play, okay? So we're gonna place a lot of value on your alignment, your assignment, and your key and those kids should be able to verbalize those things to us whenever we want okay very very important things and then lastly is your technique and finish so i don't care how good johnny's back pedal is um i don't care how great of technique he has um if he doesn't know his job if he doesn't know how to line up and if he doesn't know where his eyes are okay so those are really really important things to talk with kids about when you're installing schemes Okay, so here's our thought process behind installing. Um, as you guys know, we have a ton of different types of learners. Okay, so there's, to me, there's auditory learners, there's visual learners, and then there's tactile learners, right? Like kids that learn through movement. So when we install things, we want to go through a progression to where we're meeting the, the, the needs of all different styles of learners, right? So if we're gonna install something, um, it's, it's gonna start in the spring and summer, and I'm gonna share a, a huddle install video with the kids at home. So this is just gonna be a short, quick video that I'm gonna narrate, um, and it's just gonna be an introduction to what we're installing, okay? Once we get the kids in the classroom, we're gonna install on the board, we're gonna draw it, we're gonna show some perfect clips on film. It, it's probably gonna be some college or some pro film showing perfect reps. As we get out to the field, we're gonna walk through it. We're gonna drill the techniques. We're gonna work in small groups and then we're gonna to progress to our team period, right? After practice, we're gonna share practice film with the kids. We're gonna show them what they did well, what they need to work on. Um, that progression to me um, is a big part of why we're able to be so multiple up front with what we do because we put a lot um, of time into our teaching process. Okay, so getting into our run game philosophy, 
um, especially when playing gap schemes. We want to eliminate the vertical seams and the defense. So if it's a gap scheme play, we do not want that ball to hit in the A, B, or C gaps. Okay, We want to do something with our front um, to make that ball bounce deep and outside to our athletes. Okay, We are generally a too high team. So as you guys know, when you're in a too high scheme, sometimes you're down numbers in the run game. Okay, So we have to have ways to send that ball outside and allow our perimeter guys to run it down, all right? And lastly, we wanna steal gaps and change the math. Like I just talked about, you're always gonna be down numbers when you're too high. You have to have ways in your front, in your first and second level to steal gaps and change the math. And hopefully um, we can take a look at that here on film, okay? Um, so I just wanted to briefly touch on what a gap scheme is to me. I'm sure you guys all know this, but I just wanted to quickly show a couple diagrams. So to me, when an offense is trying to run a gap scheme, they're trying to create horizontal pressure to the play side. So they're trying to wash guys down and then they're trying to kick a guy out like they are right here and wrap a guy through for the play side backer. And what that's gonna create is a vertical seam, okay? Even in this diagram, they have the end drawn as running up field. Okay, we never want to do that. Where is this ball hitting? It's hitting in the C gap. We just talked about, we want to eliminate vertical seams, okay, and force that ball to bounce outside to our help. Okay, the same thing over here. They're creating horizontal pressure to the play side. They're going to block everybody down. They're going to pull a guy, kick, pull a guy, wrap, and they're trying to create a vertical seam off of that end man. Okay, so this is what we're trying to take away when we play gap schemes. Okay, so here's a good picture for you guys of a vertical seam in a defense. I want you guys to, to take a look at the boundary here. Um, watch the technique of our boundary outside linebacker. Okay, so he's gonna get a gap scheme to his side and he does exactly what we just saw uh, in those diagrams, he runs up field and that ball is able to now hit downhill and fracture our defense. Okay. So that's what a vertical seam is. Um, let's go back here. You guys can see, okay. We're trying to gain our weak safety in the run fit here. We've got six guys for seven gaps. So we're getting our weak safety down. We're playing, kind of a version of a uh, cover three with, with our corner deep and our weak safety down as our force guy. Um, and he's expecting this ball to be bounced outside. But look at the technique of our outside backer. Can't happen. Can't happen. Here's a better look at it. Ver vertical seam. He is not using his dent technique. He's running up field. Everyone's expecting it to get hit outside and look what happens. So that is what we're trying to take away. That is the point of our dent technique. Okay, so we're looking at the boundary five technique right here. Here's gonna be a perfect example of your dent technique on film. This is something that I would probably show to kids um, in a huddle video or in one of our install meetings as a perfect rep on film, okay? so. This five technique, he doesn't sprint up field. He comes flat down the line of scrimmage. He reads his visual key and he wins inside of that first puller. Okay. Notice how fast the second and third level players can play when you play with this technique. They see pulls. They can run over the top right now because they know that this five technique is going to close space and force that ball to bounce outside to his help. Closing space, being violent, winning inside of that first puller. That's exactly what we want. All right. And like, we'll, we'll get into more of, you know, our coaching points and uh, our drills, but, but I think this is something that you guys all should really see. This is, this is perfect technique. Okay. And you talk about changing the math, watch how, with how violent this five technique is, he gets a piece of that second puller and now his buddy's free.
Okay, his buddy's free. He's in a workout field, and now his buddy's on, unblocked. Great stuff. Okay, so here are some of our coaching points. Like you just saw in film, we want to look to get violent hands to our visual key and squeeze the air out of down blocks. We, we cannot run up field and create a vertical seam. Okay, so if that visual key goes away, whether it's a tackle or a tight end, our eyes have to be inside and we have to look for pullers. Okay, once we've identified who that puller is, we want to attack that puller's inside peck with our outside shoulder. Okay, once we make contact, we want to work to pry up field, okay, and hit on the rise, running our feet and looking to attack inside of that puller to hopefully affect a second puller or make the actual tackle, okay? That's what we call a gap and a half, all right? Um, last thing here before we get into film, I want to briefly touch on what a weak shoulder is. Okay, so if you think about a pulling guard that's pulling to kick out a five technique, okay, he's going to have all of his mental weight on his outside shoulder because he's working to get his head inside and kick out. Well, that's great. We, we want to attack the inside half of that guy, okay, and pry him open and work upfield, all right? And that'll make more sense um, as we get into these drills. So, so here's our drill progression, okay? We do what we call the pup drill, the pup and press, the standing dent, and then the full dent. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to teach to our edge guys when we're going through our dent progression is their eyes. Okay, every single player has a visual key and a pressure key. If you're an edge player, your visual key is the guy that you're shaded on. Okay, we are an attack and react player. Um, we don't want to sprint up field. You guys saw the film. We are not Julius Peppers, okay? We're not going to sprint up field and make plays. We want to close space to our visual key, okay? Really hard friction those down blocks and make everything bounce. We want to close space between them and us um, and, and come flat down the line of scrimmage, all right? So... Looking at it right here, here's an edge player. His visual key right here, if he's in a five technique, his visual key is the outside pad of that tackle, okay? And this is what we call a down block. So when your visual key is moving away from you, we call that a down block. Your first step has to be at your visual key, okay? You cannot step upfield first and then expect to adjust to a, to a down block. We have to step at our guy, okay? Um, and violently come flat down the line of scrimmage, okay? It says right here, sh shooting our hips and hands will close us tight to our technique. No air between us and the down block. All that really means is if you shoot your hands and hips at your visual key, if you shoot your hands and hips at that outside pad, your feet will follow and you'll be closer to your technique, okay? We don't want to run up field because that's going to create a visual, or sorry, <laughs> a vertical seam, all right? Okay, so the first step in our progression is what we call the pup drill. Okay, pup to us means pin the hip and up. Okay, so we're working right here on looking at our visual key. Okay, when he goes away, our feet should be stepping right at him. And we should be looking to get our hands and hips to that outside pad with our eyes inside. Closing space to our technique. Okay, so let's look at Matthew here. His hands are coming right to his technique. His feet are following, and there's no space between him and his visual key, right? Because we want to come flat down the line of scrimmage. Okay, we're taking a look here at Blake. Same thing. Would like his hand placement to be a little bit better, but he steps at his technique, closes space to his down block, comes flat down the line of scrimmage. Exactly. Okay, now, taking it to the next step, in the progression guys okay we talked about how when we attack pullers okay we want to win inside and work up the field this progression in our drill um, is working on that so we're gonna pin the hip we're, go we're gonna see the down block get our eyes inside and then work on working up the field inside of that puller okay so that cone right there would represent a puller okay it's a down block Went inside of that puller, 
and work up field. Notice how his hands and hips are taking him to his technique. Great stuff. Okay, got an out, outside linebacker here working the same technique. Okay, his first step should be at that guy. His hands are going to his near pad. He's going to come flat down the line of scrimmage and then work up field once he's inside of that cone. Boom. Nice and flat. So we drill this, guys, because once we went inside of pullers, we want to be able to snap square and then get back involved in that play. And you'll see that on film. All right, last one. Blake, hands and hips to his technique, work flat down the line of scrimmage, win upfield. Stiff, stiff. Okay, now the, con the contact portion. Okay, now we're really working on our upper body violence once we run into our puller. Okay, so we've already worked our pup technique. We've come flat down the line of scrimmage. Now it's time to make contact with a puller. Like, like we talked about, we want to win inside of that puller and then snap our shoulders parallel to the line of scrimmage so we can um, get involved in the tackle. So that's what we're working on here. We're working on upper body violence, running our feet and hitting on the rise and snapping our shoulders square so that we can now get back involved in that play. Run our feet, snap your shoulders square. Looking at it again here. Don't like the false step by our outside linebacker, but I love how he's hitting on the rise and snapping square. This is not a wrong arm. We're not looking to get skinny. Upper body violence, snap your shoulders square. Okay, now we're putting it all into one deal. Okay, so we've got our five technique visual keys right here. He's gonna work his pup footwork. He's gonna shoot his hands and hips to his technique, his feet should follow, he's gonna come flat down the line of scrimmage and then work to win inside of that puller and snap his shoulders square to the line of scrimmage. Should look like this, boom. Now, I don't like how he doesn't bring his inside foot and point that toe vertical up the field. He's not completely square, but that's what we're looking for. We are looking for upper body violence, close space to his technique, and then win inside of that puller and work up field. Should look just like that. Yeah, yeah, we're getting kicked out here by the wrestling team. That, that's okay. Okay, I don't like the false step here. He should be gaining ground here with his inside foot to his technique. But I like how he gets hands on this guy. And then look at the violence here with his, with his shoulders and his upper body. He does a great job here of snapping square. You want to snap square so that you can get back involved in the play going this way. You cannot do that if you get skinny and come down flat when you meet that puller. All right, last one, we got Blake. Not a good look here by our offensive tackle, but I love how Blake's stepping to his technique, working to win inside of that puller. Snap your shoulder square, Blake. Bam. Okay, we're taking a look here at the outside linebacker at the bottom of the screen. Uh, we're going to get buck sweep to him. I don't like his initial footwork because he takes a false step. But what I do like is his violence and coming flat down the line of scrimmage and snapping square right there. Watch how he snaps square after the initial puller. He wins inside and then works to snap square. And he takes the second puller as well. So this is changing the math. This is allowing our second level guys, when they see gap schemes, to run over the top because they're trusting him that he's going to win inside and send the ball outside to them. Okay, so we're in like a cover two cloud concept here to this wing. So it's force player right here, it's alley player, and it's cut back right here. Look how aggressive these kids can play because Christian takes two on this dent. We love that. Okay, next clip, we got a, we got Jet with a GT coming back to the boundary. Um, I love how violent 72 is here on contact. You can see him trying to snap his shoulders square to the line of scrimmage on contact and then try to get back involved in the play, okay? So if he would have just like wrong-armed, gotten skinny, and spilled this, 
I don't know if it would have fit up like this, but but look how he violently attacks this uh, guard square, and he kind of throws off the tackle a bit, and it allows our will to get over the top and make the play. All right? Tiny little detail there, but the fact that he's square and hitting this guy thick on his inside pad and snapping square, that is what we want. Okay? And then it allows our will to make that play. Um, here's a good example here of a player using hands when he dents um, and staying square on contact and trying to press the trapper upfield. Um, notice how deep this second puller has to get because this guard gets completely picked off with this dent. Okay, love that. Again, if it's going to be a soft little spill wrong arm I don't know if that happens okay so we want to be violent when we play this technique our outside pad goes through their inside pad be violent work up the field rec shop perfect um, this is gonna be counter to the field okay here's a great look at our five technique here winning inside thick he's not trying to avoid that kick out he's trying to punish that puller okay and then here's a good look at how we fit up a second puller with the play side inside backer he's also looking to dent so it's dent one dent two make the ball bounce outside to our overhand cat i think we're playing palms out here to the field so he's he's hanging out in that curl um and that ball is going to be sent out to him, he's unblocked. All right, gonna take a look at here from the end end zone cut. Um, look at the footwork here by Blake. Okay, he comes flat down the line of scrimmage. Doesn't really get a piece of the down blocking tackle, but he comes flat, wins inside, play side backer scrapes off his butt. He sees the second puller, win inside again, and that ball is being sent out to the perimeter. All right. Okay, here's a good look. Uh, let's look to the five technique up top. This is why it's important, guys, to run your feet on contact. So that's kind of getting into our third drill, uh, the standing dent. You want to be able to have upper body violence. When you meet that trapper, you want to run your feet on contact. Work upfield. Make that ball bounce. Great job. Okay, so again... We're bringing down our weak safety here. Probably, I think we're playing man, but he's he's a free free player. Notice how our second level guys can get over the top on gap. Will's will is over the top. Weak safety's bonus. We're gonna eliminate vertical seams and force that thing outside. Running his feet on contact. Great job. Okay, um, looking at the five technique closest to us right here. He doesn't do a great job with his pad level on this play. Um, but this is an example of aggression um, and violence really trumping technique. Okay, if, 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 if you have a kid that's going to buy into this thing and, and just be violent, he doesn't exactly do his job. He doesn't win inside of this first puller. But watch how he works to snap back square and get involved in that play. Again, his pad, his pad level sucks. Okay. So watch him squeeze his technique with his hands and hips. He knows what his job is. He doesn't get there, but he snaps square and gets, and he gets back involved in that play. So not a perfect rep, but still, we're forcing that ball to be pushed outside to the perimeter, to our help. We can be fast, over the top. Okay. Uh, we're looking here. Five technique, defensive end. He does a good job right here of closing space to his technique. He doesn't hit the puller as thick as I would like, but watch how he's snapping square and trying to get back involved in that play. He's not very physical here, okay? His outside pad should be making contact with the puller's inside pad being physical. He's a little skinny here. It kind of looks like a wrong arm spill, but notice how he wraps his shoulders back square. He's at least attempting to get back involved 
in that play. Okay. So nice, nice job. I'd like you to be a little bit thicker, a little bit less head heavy here on that dent. Okay. Here's a look at the end zone. Notice how in his stance here, he's nice and tilted. We're fine with that. Okay. Play a nice heavy five, come down flat, be a little bit more physical. But snap square, nice. Okay. All right. Um, we should be looking here. I love how physical and square he is here. Um, this is this is just a great shot at how how beneficial it is, guys, to affect that second puller. Okay, so we are right here, guys. We're essentially one, two, three, four on three. Okay, this is in 2018. These guys had a heck of a quarterback. We had to cover down um, and take away, you know, the like the run pass options and you know the quick game, all that stuff. So we we had to have the the ball on runs sent to the to the perimeter. And uh, here's a great look at that. So so we're looking at Blake here, snap and square, being violent, winning inside. Now we just got to get the perimeter to fit it right. So by our rule right here. This guy here is our force player. Doesn't do a great job. He should just stay on that path. Went outside. Your alley running safety will make you right. Rip across his face. You are the edge of the defense. When we make the ball bounce outside, we got to get it down. Oof. Okay. All right. Outside linebacker, top of the screen. This is our five technique. Oh, yeah, here we go. We got our boundary outside linebacker. Sorry, guys, right here. We're going to get GT to the boundary. Bang. I would like him to be a little bit more physical, but he gets his near leg down. He's, tr he's trying to win inside. They just don't block it right. Um, this is a nice job by our outside linebacker coming flat and being physical. Here we go, Christian. Probably takes a false step. Yep. Still coming down flat. And then how we coach up our linebackers. If if you guys want to talk more about that, um, we can definitely get into that. But um, we coach up our linebackers to where if they hear a pull call, okay, you are scraping to the defensive end or the edge player's butt, and you are spilling the first thing that you see. Okay, so the second puller didn't get all, all the way through there. But if this second puller would have made it up to our play side backer, we are teaching him to win inside of that puller and continue to, to send that ball outside to our unblocked dudes. Okay, believe this is our last clip. All right, so we showed you a bad clip against Sparta. This was later in, in the game. Um, although our outside linebacker here doesn't quite win inside of the first puller, he eliminates the gap and he allows it to bounce outside. So he comes down flat, doesn't quite win inside, but he condenses that gap so much to where the second puller now kind of has to kind of stop his feet. And that ball is now forced outside to our unblocked dudes. All right, guys, so that should be about it. Um, I hope you guys learned something. If you need any additional information or if you want to get a copy of that film, please reach out to me. Uh, here's my cell phone number, my Twitter handle, and my email. Once again, thank you to Coach Rabideau and the Coaches Association. Really appreciate it, um, and I hope you guys are staying safe.